Now, for this assignment today, what we're going to do is we are going to start with, this is a two-part project, and I hope we get the second part started today because remember, this is our last live class, and I want to make sure that y'all have a good understanding of where we are um, in, in the project, okay? Now, I have placed the marble here, and I have it on a white piece of paper so you can see the strong cast shadow. We have been working with um, different types of value, and we've been doing these, th these drawings in grayscale. So last class, remember, and you should have received the assignment to turn that in. The marble is cut off, okay? Let me see if I can move my camera. Is that a little better? Now you can still see my marble and the drawing. All right. So here, good. Here you can see, this is the drawing that we did last class, remember? Where we have here, I took and I showed you how to just add in the values and using white, gray, and black, we were able to make this look three-dimensional. We are gonna do the same thing today, but we're gonna add color. And yes, I would like for you to draw this, but I've drawn my example here. Now remember, my perspective is slightly different than yours because you're looking at it from this viewpoint and I'm looking at it, whoop, oh well, from this viewpoint. Um, I hope, I'm, I'm gonna need to like glue that down so it will stay. Um, so you can see our viewpoints will be slightly different, but our values will be the same because we have the same light source. Our light source is coming from over here. I drew the contour or the outline of the marble first. Then I drew my cast shadow. And then I drew the shapes of each value. So that's what I want for you to do right now. Draw the contour of that marble first. And remember, you would draw with whisper lines. I'm gonna draw a little bit darker so that you can see. So I have my line here. That's my contour of my marble. Then I'm gonna draw my cast shadow here. So I have my cast shadow here. Now, my cast shadow actually goes off the edge of my paper. So I'm gonna draw it off the edge of my paper. I'm not going to try to fit it into that space because it would be too crowded and it would change the proportion. So if it goes off the edge, I'm just gonna draw it right off the edge. Next, I'm gonna look at my highlights. Remember, these are the white areas, the brightest areas. And I see that I have a strong highlight here, 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 and then those there. So I'm gonna draw the shape that I see of those values. And I'm doing this here so you can see, but I have my other example that I've already drawn here. The purpose of this is to get those outlines of those contours, of those values, so that you can kind of lay out your marble and see where you add those values in. This is going to be flat and look like a coloring book when you're done. We're not gonna blend this, we're just gonna fill in the values, like a coloring page. Okay. And so I have come in and I have drawn in all of my values. Don't forget, you have a highlight, your shadow always has a highlight, and your highlight always has a shadow. You want to have that balance there so that it will look more realistic. See here, I hope you can see here, you have this highlight here, and then you have the cast shadow there. So you can see there's a highlight in my shadow, and then I have a highlight here and a shadow in my highlight. That's, that's where you get those balance, that balance done. Now, 
I have drawn the values that I see. I drew the contour of the sphere. I drew this line or the shape here in the middle of what the marble looks like. I drew these highlight marks here on here, and it looks like I missed a little one, so I'm gonna add that in. I drew the shadow that I see here. I drew it here. And then I have these shadows down here, which you might see them right here. I drew those in. Are there questions about this stage or up to this point? If not, let me see a thumbs up in the camera if you're sharing your camera or say <coughs> done in the um, class feed and the class post so that I know I'm not moving too fast and I know you're ready to go. I would also love it if um, you shared your picture with me. I would love to see it. I am going to outline mine in black but I am only outlining it in black so you can see it better. Some students yesterday outlined theirs and they liked it better, and some students just left it um, plain and they were happy with that too. The outlining is a personal preference. And good morning, John. I saw you come in. I haven't said good morning to you. Good morning, John. So, I hope you can see this better with the contours and the marker. Does anyone have any questions about this? I can always tell when y'all were active because the chat goes quiet. I'm really gonna miss working with you in our live classes. I always look forward to this class. Y'all have the most participation out of all of my classes. And you interact, I love it. It's almost like we're in person. Same. So, that now, yes, thank you for saying that, Kendall. I don't think that it is, but this is when everybody starts to say, oh, it looks bad. Oh, I don't know how, it, like, it looks weird. Like this one right here, that's the one that I did before class. It looks almost like an orange to me. But that's the way it's supposed to look with just those. I can't, I'm afraid to move that further away from the it'll get cut off or move the marble. But it's supposed to look flat like that. It's supposed to have that look, okay? So please do not think that it looks bad at all because I'm sure it doesn't. Now I'm gonna make my paper a little shorter just so y'all can see better. There we go. Now, are we ready for the next stage? I wanna make sure we're ready for the next stage before I move on. I don't wanna to go too fast. This is what it's going to look like. Now, this is from a different viewpoint, but this is the one that we did in class. I did in class yesterday. Do you see how that looks flat? You have just the values and the contours uh, the values in those shapes colored in. That, this is going to serve as our value scale. Remember how in our other drawings that we've done, we would create a value scale like this. Because we're working with color now, trying to make a value scale for each one of those colors is great if you want to do that, but you'd have to do one for your white, grays, and black, so that's one. Then you'd have to do one for green, if you see green, one for orange, and one for yellow, if you see all of those colors. So that's four value scales for one image. Or you can do what I have done here, and if you draw it out and draw those shapes of those values that you see, 
then you have your values drawn in and this will be your key. So that's why we're doing it in this way. Are there questions about this so far? Because we've um, gotten a little quiet. I just need to know a thumbs up in the camera or that you're ready or done for the next stage in the chat, please. <coughs> done, good. Okay, now, good. Using your, yes. Are you ready? Let's see. I can't see. Um, Camille, do you want to show me yours? I can't um, see. You can't see? Okay, so if, if you go up to participants and, um, and you see my name, you need to click on my name. It says JC and organizer there. If you click on me, you'll get three dots. And you need to click on those three dots and pin me. If that still doesn't work, sometimes you have to go out and then come back in and it will let you see, okay? Does that sound good? Try that. Okay, try that and I'll let you back in. Okay, now I'm going to apply my color. This is why using crayons, markers, or color pencils will work really well with this because you're gonna fill in those solid colors. Those solid, I said colors. I meant value, those solid values. Now the pencils that I'm using today are these Crayola pencils. Um, a student gave these to me, which was just so sweet, and I use them in my art. Um, I think they got them from Target, but these Crayola pencils are really nice. I think this is part of their artist series. And for me, they are the closest thing to Prismacolors that I've used. So Prismacolors, you know, are professional um, grade color pencils. And these Crayola ones, I think, work just as well. So if you're looking for something that's really nice but doesn't have the price tag as um, Prismacolors, I recommend using these. Now I'm going to look and I'm going to see, okay, I have my black here. So I'm going to color in my black value here, so I'm gonna fill in my black value on my shadow. It is that simple. You will look at the value that you see and color it in solid. We're not gonna blend this. It's like a coloring page that um, you might have done when you were younger or some of you still might do it. I still love coloring pages. It's very relaxing. So this is dark, so I'm gonna color this in dark. I do ask that you still go the direction that your value goes, that your object goes. So since this spirals out, I'm gonna color it in that direction. Okay. Would anybody like to share theirs yet? So it's okay if you don't wanna share it just yet, but does anybody have any questions? I don't wanna be going too fast. And remember, this is mine now, but this was mine from yesterday. So if you can see that, so you can see what it looks like. And you can work ahead. You don't have to be filling in that value that I have. Camille, did that work better? No. No, okay. Um, what kind of device are you on? You have a computer. Okay, Do you are your um, tools up at the top of your screen or at the bottom? Like where your, op your options, where it, well, it has like um, little people, like it has two people together. Um, it has like at the chat, a raised hand, like those kind of functions that you're able to use. Um, do those, are those at the top of your screen or the bottom of your screen? The bottom, okay. Yes, okay. So, click on 
do you have an icon right there beside where the chat is that looks like two little people beside each other? It looks like, let's see. Okay, let me see. It looks like this. Oh, you can't see. So I can't, the, me drawing it would be pointless because you can't see my video. Yeah, it looks like a little person and a big person. Okay. You see that? Perfect. Click on that. Good. Do you see at the top where it says Creef, comma, Jennifer D, and then there are letters? There's a circle that says JC. Do you see that? No, I don't see you. No, I mean, do you not see my name in there at all under participants? I don't see it at all. You don't see it at all? Mm -hmm. Um, It should be the very first one that's up there at the yeah, Okay, do you see the word participants? And then you have three dots beside participants. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Well, it says, like, meeting, um... says, like, meeting. And then it doesn't show, say anything. Yeah. Okay, so what it is, is there was an update, and you need that update. Um... But you should be able to pin me. Is there something that says invite someone or dial a number? Ma'am? Is there... Um, let's try it this way. Go back to the chat. Okay. I'm back. Right? Now, in the chat, start to type my name. And hopefully my name will appear. Okay. Okay. Well then, um, Camille, I'm going to be posting this video after class and there is a Microsoft Teams update that, um, that you need. If you are on a school laptop, you need to shut down your laptop and then when you sign back in, it will give you, um, that it will give you that update automatically and it should work. Okay? Um, I don't have a laptop. I don't okay. Know. Okay. Well, then we need to, um, I need to get you the link to that update. I'll have to ask and see if I can get that for you so you can see. All right? Okay. Okay. Um, I'm sorry about that, Camille. We'll get it. Well, I'll figure something out for you, all right? All right. Now, in, in this, I see um, Kendall. Wait, if you can see my initials at the bottom, Camille, Kendall is saying, then you can click that too and click on the three dots. So at the bottom of the screen where you see all of those people, if you see JC, that's me. No, I don't see that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think it's because of the update. It just started to go through this week. Um, okay. Um, here, and Camille, if you want to, you can stay a little after class, and I'll see if we can get you shared that way, okay? Um, so I have here my um, marble, and I've filled in these values. Now, if you don't have gray... You can take your black and color your um, black in and then color white over top of it with your um, whatever material you're using, crayons, um, color pencils, anything that will work. Also, don't forget that a regular pencil is gray. So you can also just use a regular pencil for that, right? Um, so I have this here. And I'm filling in those values. Is there anyone that needs help up to this point or that has, that can't get those values done? Yeah. It's okay if your black looks like gray. Sometimes that happens depending on the um, materials that you're using. Um, so here's the thing. 
If you are just getting to this stage, it's all right. Remember that I work really fast. Okay. Also, this is the third or fourth time that I've done this, which means I'm working really, really fast. So if you're not um, up to date, I mean, like if you're not caught up to this point, it's okay. You have until Tuesday to finish this. You don't have to start and finish it in one class period. Yeah. Yeah, um, Camille, why don't you try to just go ahead and shut down your computer and then and then restart it? And let's see if that automatically gives you um, the update. And if you're done in time for the end of class, I'll let you back in, okay? Okay, and I'll, I'm looking. I've got you right here if you come back in time. So I have my shadow and value here. I have this done, and now I'm going to add in my color. But remember, when I add in my color, I am not adding in the color that I see. I'm adding the value. So it looks like when I was doing this, or maybe it's kind of moved a little, I have this darker yellow, like this golden rod or yellow orange here. Here we go. Um, I'm gonna fill that yellow in there too. And then I have this lighter yellow here. And I'm gonna fill that in here. And I am gonna color that in all the way here, even though I'm putting another value there. But remember, this is a glass marble. And that's one of those techniques and tips that we discussed last class period. When you're drawing this, the overlapping of those highlights and those shadows make it look like glass and make it more realistic because it's layered. So I'm going to come here and Kendall and everybody else that replied, thank you very much for your help um, with that. I appreciate it. And we have here, remember I'm looking not at just the color, but the value of the color. So I have this darker value here of the orange and then a much lighter value there. So I'm gonna fill that in and I'll draw my highlight, my sh mark of what that looks like. Looks like I'm just drawing this. And for those of you that have had me before, y'all will remember that I always say, draw what you see, not what you know and I am drawing what I see. And while it's gonna look flat, because I'm just filling it in like a coloring book, when we do the next step to make this realistic, you're gonna go, oh wow, that was so much easier. At least that's the goal. I hope you're gonna do that. So here, this middle part right here, this is where I say look at the value, not the color, because I know that that part of the orange is orange. But when I look at the value, it looks like a, like a red brown. It looks dark, so I'm going to fill that in like that. Okay. And let's say you only have one orange. And you're like, well, how do I make it darker or lighter? So if you only have one orange, color it down and then add white over top of it. And that will lighten it up. Okay. And if you've already added black to this to make it darker, that's fine. But when I'm making yellow and orange, these are the two exceptions. When I'm making them darker, I don't normally use black. I use brown and the reason I use brown is because yellow and black make kind of like a oh no my marble moves kind of like a dark green looking color so if I have my yellow here and I add my black to it it either overpowers it or it starts to look green you can really see it well in paint so you can't really see that 
black, that value as well. But if I have my yellow and I darken it with say either red or brown, then you can see, I need to sharpen my pencil. If you ever colored on an unsharp pencil and then you start to get those marks and indentions in the paper, they won't color over. Ugh. I hate it when that happens. It just means you need to sharpen your pencil. I keep sharpening my pencil. It keeps breaking. Here we go. Do you see how that gives you a darker value of that yellow without making it look just black? It looks much more realistic that way. Okay. So are there any questions? Because it's gotten quiet and I always get um, both excited when it gets quiet because it means you're drawing, but also a little he hesitant when I don't have any cameras on. Like, are you still there? Are you still doing your work? I hope so. Camille, did that work? Okay. And then I'm gonna come in and color this gray value in, but I'm gonna go straight over the color. Oh, perfect, yay! That you, we can thank Kendall for that. That was all her idea. Thank you, Kendall, for your help. So then I'm going to come here. I'm going to add these values in. And remember, I'm coloring it right over that gray. Because when you add it and you color it right over that gray, it makes it look more realistic. It gives that depth. Okay. And then I can add in my other values. So you have a choice if you're using white paper. Remember, of course, you can leave the paper just white where you were filling that in, or you can add um, the white color pencil or mark, I mean, or um, crayon, whichever one it is you're using. Now, can someone tell me why did we do this again? What was the purpose of doing this? You can come off your microphone, I mean your mute if you need to, and tell me again why, why are we doing this? Um, make sure that you're still coloring in that direction that it goes. So I have this light value here. It's just the lightest little bit of a value. Remember, it's, a, oh, it's that overlapping. And then we have the white here. So this is my example, the one from yesterday and then the one from today. I like the one from today better. It looks more realistic to me. I hope you can see how it just pops. Even though it's got these flat colors and areas of value, it still looks three-dimensional and it still pops. So can anyone, is anyone willing to share why did we do it this way? Drawing in the flat colors instead of blending. You can come off mute or say it in the chat. And don't be scared. Please answer up. Did I lose everybody? Are we still here? Yes. Maybe. Can I just have someone say, I'm here in the chat so I know you're still here? There we go. Okay. So 
I will explain it again because it means that I'm either y'all were shy or I didn't explain it very well. So I will say it again. The reason, thank you, now I know that we're here. The reason we did it this way is this works. Yes, thank you, Sarah. This is to show the value more. This is going to be your value scale so that you can look at this and see even though this is in color, I'm not gonna look at the color, I'm gonna look at the value. So I'm gonna see here and draw that shape and fill it in with that value. This is our value scale and this is important because when you start your independent work, it's going to be to draw this realistically and blend it, but this is gonna be your guide because all you have to do is redraw this and instead of having these harsh lines here blend those and just like that you've got yourself a realistic marble I am going to share with you a video of how to do that so you won't have to do it on your own and you won't start it and then go oh no I forgot what to do you will get a video and an assignment for me that has me drawing this realistically Okay. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah for the win. Again. Now, I'm going to switch. Is it okay for me to switch cameras or do I need to stay there? 